Welcome to Business Math. This lesson is designed to prepare you to start creating calculations, formulas, and functions in Microsoft Excel. For this assignment, we will be discussing the importance of order of operations when working with spreadsheets and practicing solving formulas using the proper order of operations. We will also be reviewing some of the common business math problems that you will see in your upcoming spreadsheet assignments. Now, if you're like me, math may not be your strongest subject, and you may feel like Calvin here as you try to complete your math homework. Perhaps you aren't very excited to do math in this class either. However, the whole purpose of this class is to learn how to train the computer to do all of the difficult math so that you don't have to. But in order for you to teach the computer to do your math, you have to understand the basic equations first. Today, we will be reviewing and practicing some of those common equations. My experience has been that the more dedicated students are in this lesson, the easier their following lessons are. Now as we get started, it's important to note some of the symbols that Excel and other spreadsheet softwares use in their math calculations. Some of them are already familiar to you from your math classes, like add and subtract. However, for multiplication, we often use an X in math classes, but Excel can't use that symbol since it's already a letter. Instead, Excel uses the star symbol, which is often called an asterisk. The divide is a forward slash, and if you have exponents, Excel uses this upward pointing V symbol. This symbol is called a caret. No, not the vegetable. This caret is spelled C-A-R-E-T, and that's the name for this upward pointed arrow symbol that we use for exponents. You will use these symbols a lot throughout our Excel section. If you are looking for them on your keyboard, the easiest place to find them is on your 10-key number pad on the right of the keyboard. Now, if you are doing this from home and your keyboard doesn't have a 10-key number pad, you can also find these symbols on a normal keyboard. The plus, the minus, asterisk, forward slash, and the caret. For any symbols that are on the top of the keys, like these, you will need to press the shift button to use these symbols. So let's talk about order of operations. You should be familiar with order of operations from your math classes, but let's review. Order of operations is the specific order in which multi-step math equations are solved. This is important in spreadsheets because the computer will always follow proper order of operations even if you don't. Let's review the order of operations together. First you start by doing everything in parentheses. Then you do any exponents next. After exponents, you solve any multiplication and division. And then you finish with addition and subtraction. One way to help you remember the order is to make up a mnemonic phrase like this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Susie. P-E-M-D-A-S. Each of those letters stand for one of the areas in the order of operations and helps you to remember which order they go in. Now let's try applying this order of operations in an equation together. Here is a math equation that we can solve using proper order of operations. What do we do first? Well, first we start by doing anything in parentheses. So we would subtract the 5 from the 15 and get 10. Even though the subtraction comes at the very end of order of operations, because this is in parentheses, we do it first. Next, we would do exponents. In this case, 2 to the third power. That's 2 times 2 times 2, or 8. This leaves us with 3 times 3 plus 10 divided by 2 minus 8. Now we can do the multiplication, 3 times 3, which is 9. Now division, 10 divided by 2, or 5, and we are left with 9 plus 5 minus 8. Next is the addition, 9 plus 5, and finally the subtraction, 
14 minus 8 to give us the final answer of 6. Although most of us are comfortable with order of operations, and can even recite it from memory, when we are rushed or pressured like on an assignment or test, sometimes we forget or miss a step. Microsoft Excel and other spreadsheet programs always follow order of operations, so it's important that when we create calculations or formulas in Excel or other spreadsheet software, we always follow the order of operations. Otherwise, Excel will still do the calculation for you, but your answer will be very wrong. Now, our next business concept is averages. Averages are used often by businesses to compare and analyze data from two different sources. This might be average sales from one month to the next, or average attendance at an event. To find the average of a group of numbers, you need to add the numbers together and then divide by the number of items in the group. Let's say, for example, I wanted to know the average of this group of numbers. First, I would need to add them all together. That gives me 42. Then, I need to count how many numbers I have in the group. In this case, I have 6. Now if I divide the total, 42, by the count, 6, I get the average, or 7. Percentages are also a popular calculation for businesses. Businesses use percentages to calculate ratios and other metrics that measure the health and growth of their companies. To find a percentage of a number, you need to multiply the number by the percentage. Now let's say that I want to know what 35% of 90 is. I would multiply the two numbers together. Now Microsoft Excel and other spreadsheet software can calculate a percentage just by typing the percent sign like it's shown here, but a calculator can't always do that. To use a percentage in a calculator, you will probably need to convert it to decimals like this. To convert a percentage to decimals, just remember that 100% is the same as 1.00. Now payroll is possibly one of the most important calculations a business makes. Payroll is the calculation of payment to employees. A person who is paid by the hour works for an hourly rate, which is a set amount of money for each hour that is worked. The total amount of money that an employee is paid is called gross pay. To calculate gross pay, you multiply the total hours of the employee worked by the rate they are paid each hour. For example, let's say that Cassie earns $16.25 an hour. What is her gross pay for the last week if she worked 25 hours? Let's start with our formula, gross pay equals rate times hours. Now we know that Cassie's rate is $16.25 per hour. And we know that she worked 25 hours. So 16.25 times 25 equals $406.25. And that's how gross pay is calculated. A markdown is used in retail businesses when they offer sales or discounts. A markdown is when a product is discounted down to a lower price. To calculate a markdown, take the full price and multiply it by the sales percentage. This tells you the markdown on the price. However, most of the time customers don't want to know the markdown, they want to know what they have to pay. So let's calculate the sales price too. To get the sales price, you subtract the markdown from the full price. That is what most customers want to know and what you can expect to see on a homework assignment. Most students calculate the markup really well, but calculate the markup when the instructions ask for the total owned by the customer. So pay close attention to your assignments to see if we're asking for just the markdown price or the full sales price, which is 
full price minus the markdown. Let's try an example of this. Let's buy a $100 item that's 15% off on sale. How much do we owe for that product? Let's start by getting the markdown. So we'll take the full price of $100 and times it by the 15%. Remember, on a calculator, you may need to convert this to decimals. So that would be 0 0.15. 15% of $100 is $15, so that is our markdown, or the amount we take off of the original price. But the question asked how much we owe, so how much do we actually owe on this? To find that out, we start with our original price of $100, and then subtract the $15 markdown. That leaves us with a sale price of $85. Now sales tax is also common in the retail space. In most states, when you purchase items from a store, you pay a price of the item plus sales tax. In Provo, at least now in 2020, sales tax is typically 7.25%. So let's pretend that we are selling an item that's $76.50 here in Provo. So we have a sales tax price or percentage of 7.25%. Remember that to calculate percentages, you multiply. So let's multiply the $76.50 by 7.25%. Again, if you need to convert the decimals to a, or convert two decimals for a calculator, the decimal for this percentage would be 0.0725. Once we multiply this, the sales tax amount would be $5.55. Now that's the sales tax amount, but again, if the question asks for the total amount that the customer has to pay, we need to add the sales tax to the price. In this case, the total customer would pay the $76.50 price plus the $5.55 in sales tax or a total of $82.05. So let's review what we've learned today. Today we've learned that the order of operations is important to spreadsheets because the software always follows the order of operations even if you don't. If you don't put the equation in correctly, the computer will still calculate it. It will just give you a wrong answer. We also learned about several common business math problems and how to solve them. Practicing these today will help us as we prepare to use these calculations in our spreadsheet assignments later on. When we recognize and can calculate these outside of Excel, it makes it easier to understand and recognize them when we are working in the software.